Why? Why? You think you're the only person that have problems? Do you think the antelope is busy walking around and saying, oh, it's divine destiny for me to be, the, be captured by a lion? Do you think the frog is busy saying, oh, 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 uh, some witch, some witch somewhere, uh, move the snake for the snake to be able to get me? Do you think the lizard is, is busy right now and saying, it's divine destiny that I capture the cockroach? Do you think the cockroach is busy wondering, oh, why me? Why am I getting killed all the time? The devil is after. It's only human beings that some way, somehow, the devil is after, forgetting that there's a whole ecology of life. And all of it, it's only the human beings that is being pursued by the devil and demons and spirit and not the animals, not all the other living entities. All the wickedness that you do to the plant, should the plant also consider you the devil? The truth of the matter is, majority of us are actually demons to these animals, to other species. Human beings are the devils you are looking for. When you want to experiment on something, don't you go and get the animals? Did you take permission from the animals? Did you ask them? We have something we call a guinea pig. Did you ask them first before you went to get them? So if you think the animal have a sense of prayer and they are praying against any demon, who do you think the animals will be praying against? Aquaba, Aquaba, Aquaba. Welcome to the Maker Series. I'm myself, Kojo Bento, and this is definitely the place to be. Go to our website, call our numbers. Make sure you make all your inquiries. Whatever spiritual question, whatever spiritual situation, whatever it is called spirituality, we've got the answers. And we definitely have the personnel to ensure you your total well-being is achieved. And of course, you need your personal altar and you need the two media, you need a power stick. If you still believe that somebody is actually out there to get you or you believe that there's somebody coming from somewhere to save you, coming down to save you, then I, I don't know, like, you need to understand that we live in a round planet, which literally is constantly spinning around. Because you think there's somebody up there in the sky or is coming down. If, if you've traveled in a plane before, the minute you go to a certain altitude, you literally see the whole earth around, right, spinning. You realize that after this sky, after this clouds, there's no up. There's nothing like up there. God, the world is constantly spinning, turning on its axis. So as a matter of fact, this entire cosmos, there's not a pivot, there's not a point that has the inscription, this is up and this is down. So God is in the sky and the devil is down in the earth. For you to be, begin to think that there's actually somebody, the sky would open up, somebody coming from the sky, which up being in heavens is coming down to save you. If you're still living in this fantasy, then you're actually in for, for a lot of disappointment because there's actually, show me where up is. Don't forget the earth is constantly spinning and everything else surrounding the earth, this planet that we are on is also spinning. So where would you stand to be able to determine that this is actually up? Something is coming down from up to save me. Where, where is this app coming from? The only distinction available to us human beings as we speak, the only thing that is sure is what is inside of you and what is outside of you. This is the only reality, this is a fact. Everything that's gonna be thrown out of the way. There's nothing actually that is saying this is, but what is in and what is out there, you know it. You've, you've said it hundreds, something on the inside, something in me told, you've said it, there, there's, there's definitely an in, the real you is definitely in, and everything that is outside of the real you, it's just what it is, I said. There's an unimaginable profound system of self-exploration and self-transformation that the minute anybody comes into the school to actually understand and assess the base of this claim, you, you'll be blown away the things that will follow after this person. When we come to the subject of growth, you aging, literally, growing in age, numbers, you don't have to be aware of this. You don't have to be conscious of it. 
As a matter of fact, the truth matter is you have never for a single minute of your life involved yourself in whether you grow or you don't grow. You've never involved yourself in whether we, you increase in weight or you, it, it hasn't happened consciously. Before you know it, it's actually happening. It can happen consciously, but majority of the time you are not involved, it's not happening consciously. And because it's not happening consciously, give and take, you do not per se have an absolute imprint, impact on what is actually going on for you. But this system, this profound, unimaginable system that can actually transform your life is becoming spiritually conscious that you can be very much, you can do this consciously, being very much aware and knowing every step of the way exactly what and what you did to come into this awareness of spirituality and actually use that premise, use that basis to jump into the fourth dimension. This is real. This is something you can actually ascertain. Spiritual evolution can happen consciously. All it takes is you becoming willing. That's all it takes. It doesn't take any mystified structures or principles. It's just you saying, I am willing to know. I, I am willing. I, I'm ready actually to be on this one. The minute you make that decision, you come to this place where you are consciously wiring and weaving your way through that which is waiting for you. When we talk about something up or down, when we talk about what is good and what is bad, because I've already proven there's, there's no up or down in this reality, and, and good or bad, I've said it in a previous video, that's sacred or profound, I've said all of this. All of these things are assumed, they are not factual. It's based on assumptions that people think that there's an up and there's a down. This is not the reality. It's based on assumptions that people say that something is profound and something is filthy. Assumption. It's not based on any fact. It's not nature. It's not real. The only reality that we know is that which is internal, inside, and that which is outside of you. This is the only reality. This is something that you are certain that is sure. Trying to understand reality from the outward perspective is something that would never come to an end because you would never be able to fully access the immensity of what is out there. I mean, if you think, just, just go out of your window and look to the horizon and see how far you can look to, right? It, it's not, imagine you seeing just a mountain sitting next to you. Try walking to that mountain. You realize that it's actually further than, than the distance you saw in your eyes. Unlike going inwards, unlike actually deciding to become conscious, unlike actually deciding to become aware, in just a split second, in just a single moment, poof, everything changes. If you decide that, you know what, I want to be under this particular spiritual umbrella, right? If you decide to go on that route, the discoveries that you make on this journey is endless. Because once you learn something, you learn something else that will take you to another thing, that will take you to a discovery, a premise that is set by another person or this person and this, this great person and this saint and this holy man and this, you, you keep going, it's never ending. But once you decide to come alive, come awake, come on this path, just that instant, that very day, you will know your life has changed. Because it's an instant choice you decided. You know what? Things, something is simply just not adding up. So this is what I want to do. I want to quiet all the noise that is coming from the outside. And I want to, I want, I want to listen to, I'm willing and ready. And I want to actually start listening to me, the real me. My true self. I want to start paying attention. The minute you make that decision instantly, your life is changed for the rest of your experience. You start from being a victim because obviously everything you believe somebody else is teaching you to now come into a place where you, you become a master of your own destiny. And let's talk about the subject destiny. It's, it's something that is widely, widely misconstrued and mis understood and everybody throw the subject around divine destiny oh there's a divine destiny by the time i'm done with this session you realize that there's actually not a single thing called divine destiny hold on whenever it comes to a point where we have to do something for ourselves we always take matters into our own hands and in that state in that circumstance we never attribute that effort 
to divine destiny. When somebody asks you how you manage to become that particular thing that you become after the choice that you made for yourself, you would totally attribute it to either training, either perfection, either skills, either repetitiveness, either um, you working hard. So the slogan, hard work pays, right? Because you, for example, if you want to build a house, Nobody goes and says it's divine destiny, it's divine. The creator says I should live in a 10 bedroom house, so by divine destiny the house appears. Nobody says that. You work so hard, you make your own money, and you build the house that you want to build, and at the end of the day, you say that, oh, I just built me a new house. I, I just bought a new mansion. You say me, I. I, me, I did this, I did this, I, I got married, I found myself a wife, I did this, and, and, and I got a new job, and I bought a new car, and I bought a new phone, and I bought a new this, and I bought a new that, and I acquired a new, everything, when, when it comes to you acquiring or doing something, you give the attributes to you. Okay, no problem. Have you ever paid attention to, whenever it comes to a misfortune, Whenever it comes to an incident happen, whenever it comes to something bad, something cruel, something sad, something heartbreaking, something disappointing, all of a sudden, it is no longer you that is doing it, it's divine destiny. When a misfortune happens, oh, God will it and God take it. Oh, oh, it's God's will. You, you can't ask, the, you, you, who are you to question God? Because it came to a misfortune, something bad happened to you, you say it's God. When you lose something, you say it's God. When you gain something, you say it's you. You see the unfairness in our being, in our state of existentiality. What happens to divine destiny when you bought yourself a brand new car? Did you say it's divine destiny, it's, it's divine? But when you lost your mother, you say, oh, God, God give it and God take it. That is divine destiny. When you fail in life, you say, it's God's will, he knows best. You never take responsibility and never say that, oh, actually, this is, I did this. You don't do that. But whenever it comes to something that has a personal attachment to it, automatically you say, I did this. Once you say, it's God's will, who would blame you? <laughs> All of a sudden, the responsibility of your failures is taken away from you. It, it's, it's God's will. God take it. And I don't mean to pry on anybody's emotions or anybody's pain or anybody's past. The minute anybody loses a child, they go what and say what? Oh, it's God's will. God give it. God take it. He knows best. But whenever anybody gives birth to a child, see, I gave birth to a bouncing baby boy. Why is it that when you gave birth, you never said it's God's will? And when you lost, because automatically divine destiny takes absorbs the responsibility of you and all of a sudden puts all the blame on God. It's like, <laughs> I'm gonna say this, it's not anything fun. It's like when a man have his way with a woman, what does the man say? Oh, I was able. I was able to, to, to get her, I, I won the girl, I, 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 I have mouth, I have moves, I, I, I can win any girl. When, when you have your way with a girl? When the girl goes to report that it's a rape case, what do you say? It's the devil. It's the de I have no idea. The devil did this. Ah. You see where I'm going with this? We have learned some way, some have become so lazy in our ways that whenever we actually are supposed to be responsible for the things that we do, we automatically want to blame it on some divine and the divine has destined for me to be. Divine destiny is only assigned to misfortunes. And when somebody does something great, they say, practice. Practice, practice. Destiny has become a popular scapegoat for mankind. It is such a renovated way to deal with our feelings. In time past, like 150, 120, 200 years ago, when certain diseases broke out, right? Everybody was saying, well, it's God's judgment on our lives. <laughs> it's because of the things that we've done. Now, God is upset, so God is bringing this sickness to judge us and, and condemn us because of our filth and our wrongs. Were we not here when Apollo came? Apollo. When, when he came, they said it's something, punishment from God. Okay, polio. 
They say, what? Well, once you become a, you, how do you call it, a handicap, right? It's a sign of unrighteousness. It's in the Bible, leprosy and all of these things. It's a sign of unrighteousness, right? Now we got an antidote for polio, so nobody is suffering from polio anymore, and nobody is given the credit that is divine destiny that gave you the antidote. Let's go back, malaria. Malaria was a killer disease that everybody was scared of, right? And nobody wanted to have anything to do with malaria. So it's God's punishment. You might not say this now because you only came to meet it yesterday. I'm talking about the thousands and, men and the millions that died because of malaria. They all attributed it to divine. Now we have the cure of malaria. Nobody has mentioned any divine to malaria. Ebola, before Ebola came eight, divine. God's way of punishing. Just to jerk a lot of people's memory, okay? Let's not go far. God, all these sicknesses I mentioned, oh, nobody said that. Okay, COVID. When COVID started, do you know the number of pastors, the number of leaders, the number of spiritual that say, oh, it's God's way, it's divine to reset, it's punishment coming, it's this coming, it's this coming, and it's that coming, and it's that coming, and it's that coming, and it's that coming. Now, all of a sudden, People are finding certain remedies to certain things and it is no longer God in the affairs of men. Now it is man's science and, and the advancement of science that has actually discovered and recovered all these sicknesses. Where was the divine when men found the antidote to these killer diseases that was destroying mankind? It's no longer divine destiny. Now it's man that is able to be human means you can mold situations you are living in in the way you want them to be. That is what to be a human being means. That, that, that whatever situation you encounter, you will be able to mold it, to shape it to the way you want it. If you are failing to do so, then you are certainly not fulfilling the task the creator gave you to be, at least let's call that a, that a divine destiny. As a, the creator has actually ensured that you are able to power your way through every situation that you encounter. Nobody is calling that divine destiny. Instead of us coming to this place where we actually bend the situations, move the situations to go according to how we want them to go. Now, sadly, most people are falling victims to the situations that they find themselves. And these situations all of a sudden become lords over them. And they, they oftentimes say this word, why am I in this situation in the first place? Why was I kept in the, why did I come? Is the devil, the devil has brought me down to this situation. Please shut up. No devil has put you in any situation. No witch, no wizard has put you in any, you chose that particular situation you find yourself in because you knew you could reign over that situation and that's what makes you a human being. The creator made you an absolute beast of a being with such high intelligence that your physical body is able to perform such tremendous works that beats the science of any discovery of any age. Your physical body alone, right? Then he gave you a phenomenal mind to be able to use this mind to solve whatever situation that comes your way. And not just that, he empowered you with a spirit gave you a spirit and said whatever it is if your physical body is not support is not able to fix it your mental body will be able to fix it if your mental body is not able to fix it, your spirit body is not able will be able to fix it. and if your spirit body just some way somehow fails then your created being will be able to fix four layers of fixing problems was given to you why why you think you're the only person that have problems do you think the antelope is busy walking around and saying, oh, it's divine destiny for me to be, be captured by a lion? Do you think the frog is busy saying, oh, 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 uh, some witch, some witch somewhere uh, move the snake for the snake to be able to get me? 
Do you think the lizard is, is busy right now and say, it's divine destiny that I captured a cockroach? Do you think the cockroach is busy wondering, oh, why me? Why am I getting killed all the time? The devil is after. It's only human beings that some way, somehow, the devil is after, forgetting that there's a whole ecology of life to sustain the nature, to sustain, to sustain creation just as the creator has intended it to be. We forget. And all of it is only the human beings that is being pursued by the devil and demons and spirit and not the animals, not all the other living entities. All the wickedness that you do to the plant, should the plant also consider you the devil? The truth of the matter is, majority of us are actually demons to these animals, to other species. Human beings are the devils you are looking for. Whenever we try to have out a way to serve our personal need and greed. Do you know that you do so at the suffering of the other? Do you know, whenever you want to perform experiments on any human, who do you think is suffering? Of course, the, the high CEOs are enjoying the benefit of the science, of the experiment. When you want to experiment on something, don't you go and get the animals? Did you take permission from the animals? Did you ask them? We have something we call a guinea pig. Did you ask them first before you went to get them? So if you think the animal have a sense of prayer and they are praying against any demon, who do you think the animals will be praying against? But oh, the human being is so busy fleeing from responsibility and assigning whatever fault, assigning whatever thing we encounter to something sitting somewhere that is doing. And after we've created the mess, now something else that is also somewhere will have to now come and save us from something. If you are not in this world to fix a problem, I, 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 I'm, I'm beginning to question, why are you even a human being? Why did the creator create you into existence? Do you know if you're willing, do you know, and, and I'm challenging everybody that is watching, do you know if you're literally willing, you can solve any problem that you encounter? Fact! If you don't run away from responsibilities, you can literally fix anything that you encounter in this life. But what do you do? You run away. Don't take responsibility. And this is how you are failing to be a human being. Time is fast, I gotta, I gotta let you go. Listen, I love you guys. Make sure you visit our website, www.makra.org. Please share our videos. Tell a friend to tell. Let's wake our people up. Let's, it's time we start taking responsibilities as a human. It's time we start using all our faculties. Call our numbers for all your inquiries. We provide so many services. Contact us, whatever well being. I'm telling you, you cannot come to Makra and apportion blame to anybody else. You learn to take responsibility because you know whatever is happening to you, you are deciding for them to happen to you. I love you guys. Have a great day. Mwah.